May I have your attention, please? The Earth is a sphere. That is all. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. You know, when I say how stupid can you be, that's not a challenge. That's a question. But for some reason, the quantum eraser insists on taking it as a challenge. And he's about to show you exactly how stupid he can be. Warning. Severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts. Push the monitors back out of punching range. And let's light a dumpster fire and have some fun. You know, QE doesn't understand Newton or general relativity, and he's never going to. But before we get to that, let's listen to some recent buffoonery on John's part, as he is completely unable to understand that clockwise and counterclockwise are ways of specifying the direction of rotation. This is unbelievable. Oh, yeah, I didn't bring up star rotation. So if you want to address that, that's fine. I, I won't. No, you did bring up star rotation the other day. Oh, the other day? Yeah, that wasn't today. So I won't be responding to it, but you can talk about it, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to, no, that's your argument. You said that the stars were rotating in different directions. Oh, yeah, the other day. Today I brought up uh, my experiment. But you can talk about whatever you'd like. I'm just. No, we want to go over your star rotation proof as a, as a setup to that 106 year out of date pseudoscience non-experiment that you did. No, like I said, continue. Yeah. So you claim stars rotate in different directions depending on what hemisphere you're in. And that was your proof for a globe earth that spins. Yeah, that, that, that one. Oh no, you, the spinning, spinning would be uh, Bob's gyro data. Oh, the gyro, yeah, really? That was, was that an experiment? No, no, but it was a measurement. It was good. No, it was a measurement. Sure. We'll get back to Bob's bit later. So, do stars rotate in different directions? Hello? The southern, your southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere, you said they rotated in different directions. And I think you used the terms clockwise and counterclockwise. My first question to you is, are clockwise and counterclockwise actual directions? Oh, if you're talking to me, I'm not interested in a uh, rhetoric discussion. Oh, rhetoric discussions. This isn't rhetoric, you numpty d it. It's your claim. Right, this is rhetoric. This is observable. This isn't rhetoric. You claim that the stars rotate counterclockwise and clockwise two different directions. Your exact f***ing words. And this was your proof of a globe tard. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't dispute that claim. Sure, when you're looking at the uh, Polaris, the uh, stars seem to rotate in a particular direction, and then when you're looking south, there's no south celestial pole, but at that south celestial pole, it's a different direction than when you were looking at Polaris. So there's no south celestial pole, but when you look towards the south celestial pole, it makes perfect sense. So well, they're going no in different celestial directions. Star. How about that? So, so they're going in different directions, right? Yeah, sure. One's going clockwise, one's going counterclockwise. Sure. That's my point. See, clockwise oh and counter... Yeah, hold on. Clockwise and counterclockwise aren't actual directions. That's your problem. Well, let's see what we got here. I just Googled, is clockwise a direction? Without even going to any of the articles, this is what comes up. Clockwise by Wikipedia. Clockwise motion, abbreviated CW, proceeds in the same direction as a clock's hands. Well, let's see. Twinkle.com, clockwise and counterclockwise. Clockwise and counterclockwise are ways of indicating the direction of a turn, John. Let's try Quora.com. Clockwise is spinning in the direction of an analog clock. How about QMath.com? Clockwise and anti-clockwise are ways of indicating the direction of a turn, John. Do I need to go on? Tell you what, let's move forward to Newton and general relativity, shall we? So, you're doing the Cavendish experiment in vacuum, is that correct? Uh, torsion balance within a chamber under vacuous conditions and atmospheric conditions because it was okay. uh, it was Chemo's claim that it would act differently under vacuous conditions. So it is the Cavendish so-called experiment. Uh, that'd be the the basis, sure. The the model, the standard, sure. Okay, my question to you is: Why are you performing 
a non-experiment from 106 year out of date pseudoscience. Oh no, I'm performing oh. an experiment to validate my claim of mass attracting mass. Yeah, from 106 year out of date pseudoscience. Why are you doing that? John, you know as much about Cavendish as a water buffalo knows about skateboarding. But go ahead, make a fool of yourself. This is Chemo's fault, partially. Uh, oh, hey, crack villain. That's it. Don't worry about Chemo's fault. So why are you performing a non-experiment from 106 years out of date pseudoscience? Oh, no, I'm performing an experiment to uh, validate my claim of mass attracting mass. That's yeah, mass, that's mass attracting mass. That's the cabin district. Talk about trying to weasel your way out. Well, you're not going to speak for me or my position. So no, I, I'll your position, your position is mass attracting mass. It's the f***ing Cavendish experiment, isn't it? Yeah, uh, sure. Yes, there are okay. uh, iterations and changes to it. Okay. But sure, yeah, so that's the foundation. Why, yeah, so why are you performing a non-experiment from 106 year out of date pseudoscience is my question. Again, I'm performing an experiment validating my claim of mass attraction. All right, mass. yeah, I hear you're a f***ing idiot. At 14 minutes after the hour, this f***ing guy is performing a non-experiment from 106 year out of date pseudoscience from his alma mater wiki newton's classical mechanics were superseded in the early 20th century when albert einstein developed the special and general theory of relativity from john's alma mater wikipedia general relativity generalizes special relativity and refines not supersedes john newton's law of universal gravitation Strike one. From sciencealert.com, the mathematical equations of Einstein's general theory of relativity tested time and time again are currently the most accurate way to predict gravitational interactions, replacing those developed by Isaac Newton several centuries prior. From your citation, reading from the second paragraph, when Einstein tried to apply accelerating masses to his special theory, he realized objects with mass must somehow influence the surrounding dimensions, space-time, in such a way that the object seems to act as if it can pull on other masses. It acts as if matter weighs down the fabric of space-time it is sitting in, creating a curve that causes other nearby matter to slide towards it. The mathematical equations of Einstein's general theory of relativity tested time and time again, are currently the most accurate way to predict gravitational interactions, replacing those developed by Isaac Newton several centuries prior. Until Einstein, Newton had the most accurate way to predict gravitational interactions. Einstein replaced Newton as a more accurate method under certain circumstances. He didn't replace Newton. Let's see what Einstein thought about it. This is a letter he wrote to the London Times dated November 28th, 1919. Top paragraph. The new theory of gravitation diverges considerably as regards principles from Newton's theory, but its practical results agree so nearly with those of Newton's theory that it is difficult to find criteria for distinguishing them which are accessible to experience. In other words, You've got to look long and hard to find situations where Newtonian physics and general relativity don't give you exactly the same answer. But he goes on in the next to the last paragraph in this letter. Let no one suppose, however, that the mighty work of Newton can really be superseded by this or any other theory. His great and lucid ideas will retain their unique significance for all time as the foundation of our whole modern conceptual structure in the sphere of natural philosophy. Now, Einstein didn't think he superseded Newton, John. Why do you think he did? Strike two. Hmm. From Fizz Libra text. Newton's two crowning achievements, the laws of motion and the laws of gravitation that had reigned supreme since published in the Procipia in 1687, were toppled from the throne by Einstein. And from chapter two of that same publication, John, however, for most practical applications, relativistic effects are negligible, and Newtonian mechanics is an adequate description at low velocities. Therefore, chapters two through 16 will assume velocities for which Newton's laws of motion are applicable. I think that's strike three, buddy. And lastly, 
Andrea Gez, UCLA professor of physics and astronomy. Einstein's right, at least for now, said Gez, a co-lead author of the research. We can absolutely rule out Newton's law of gravity. You already had strike three, John, but we'll let you have another swing at it. There are two places where Newton's law of gravity doesn't work. One is near very massive bodies, like black holes, and another is at speeds that are a significant fraction of the speed of light. The article you quoted from, from Science News, John, says Einstein's general relativity theory is questioned but still stands for now. The summary says, in the most comprehensive test of general relativity, near the monstrous black hole at the center of our galaxy, researchers report that Einstein's theory of general relativity holds up, at least for now. Of course you can rule out Newton's law of gravity. It doesn't work next to a black hole, you dum-dum. So, my question again is, why are you performing a 106-year-out-of-date pseudoscience non-experiment unless this has something to do with general relativity? You know the Cavendish experiment measures the value of the gravitational constant that we call Big G, right, QE? And in the Cavendish experiment I did, I measured Big G to have a value of 6.63 times 10 to the minus 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. That's within 1% of the currently accepted value. Now, John, do you recognize this? I'm sure you probably don't, so let me tell you what it is. This is general relativity. These are Einstein's field equations. And there's a constant in here that I want you to pay attention to. It's this one, big G. Oh, you say, well, that must be something different. Afraid not, buddy. Reading from here, the proportionality constant is found to be 8 pi G divided by C to the fourth, where G is the gravitational constant. That is the same one we use when we use Newtonian physics. So, my question again is, why are you performing a 106-year-out-of-date pseudoscience non-experiment unless this has something to do with general relativity? Does the gravitational constant have anything to do with general relativity? It's part of the field equations, QE. Where did you learn physics? From that kid you sat next to on the short bus? So let's review the things you don't seem to understand. First of all, you don't think counterclockwise and clockwise are actual directions. You have this thought that general relativity replaced Newton when Einstein himself said it didn't. And you don't understand what Cavendish measures or where the gravitational constant is used, now do you? So here's a challenge for flat Earth. Using general relativity, I want one of you knob sockets to predict the apparent force I measured between the masses in the Cavendish experiment and show that the prediction differs from the Newtonian prediction. You think you could pull that one off, QE? Uh, maybe that's asking a bit much. In fact, rather than talking about science, maybe you ought to stick to something you know a little more about. Maybe you should try writing culinary reviews for some of our finer restaurants. I'll bet even you can't screw up a Big Mac. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down there. Shout out to the patrons and PayPals. I appreciate everything you guys do. And we'll see you on the next one.